Hello, everybody. Welcome to another of the Big Love Relationship Series interviews that Susie and I are doing. My name is Otto Collins. I am so honored to have as my guest today, Dickon Bettinger. Dickon, welcome. Well, hi, Otto. Thank you. Good to be here. Dickon, for folks that are not familiar with you, have been under a rock somewhere and don't know anything about you, could you share the, I don't know, 30 second version or the one minute version of who you are and, and what kind of contributions you're trying to make in the world right now? Well, I spent 40 years as a psychologist. I like to think of myself as a retired psychologist, but it's a joke, Otto. I'm working harder now than I ever have. <laughs> I love that. Uh, early on, I got interested in, early on in my career, I got interested in uh, psychological well-being and what people can learn to have well-being. And it was at a time when the whole field of psychology was focusing on mental illness and what's wrong with people. So that's what my primary interest has been. If you wanna help someone get healthier, help them understand that they have what they're looking for and how to, what they need to understand in order to access that well-being. And so now I, I've written a book called Coming Home, Uncovering the Foundations of Psychological Well-Being. And I, and pre-COVID, was doing seminars all over the world in psychological well-being. And uh, post-COVID, I've been doing three or four uh, webinars a week to reach out and uh, bring this good news message to people. And you know, if I'll add just a personal note, one of the things I love about you that, and in fact, one of the reasons that my wife Susie and I wanted to have you as a part of our relationship series is uh, we've never met in person. I've listened to a lot of recordings. Uh, my wife Susie and I were a part of Michael Neal's Super Coach Academy about four mm -hmm. years back. And I know that you were one of the instructors uh, uh, that joined us uh, mm -hmm. uh, during that. And every time I've ever heard you, read your book, there's, a, there's an essence that comes through mm. that that's the, there's an essence of love. There's an essence of presence that comes through that's... Mm. I think available to everybody, but you embody that as well as anyone I've ever uh, known about. So that's the reason we wanted to have you on. And I, just wanted to I, I, I like your use of that word, the essence, because that's one of the most profound things I learned is that at the core of every human being is our true nature. And that you can... The true nature reveals itself for any person as their personal mind quiets down. They become free of all of that thinking that burdens them. And as we become free of that burden, what I see universally happen for anyone, anyone, is that as their mind quiets down, their heart starts to open. Now what that means is people start to feel more present, more alive. They begin to feel more friendly. They begin to like rather than dislike. They begin to feel more connected to life in a positive way. And they're able to bring a caring and a kindness to other people. And it's very different. When I started psychology, the whole understanding was people didn't have that inside. Mm -hmm. you, you were damaged by life events and memory. 
and wounded and you had to work really hard to try to develop your psychological well-being. Well, essence means something that's fundamental. It's the great discovery is the part of us that's well inside can't be damaged, can't be hurt, no matter what's happened to us. And, and I've worked with people with severe traumas and they still have, when their head clears of their thinking, they lighten up and become warm and kind and friendly like anyone else. Hmm? Very different understanding, isn't Very different. it, Otto? You already have it always inside underneath all of this mess of our thinking we get caught up in, and it will reveal itself to anyone for free when <laughs> that gets out of the way. So then the, it's interesting to understand the only thing that gets in the way of love, our in, innate love and well-being. Right. Yeah, I was having a conversation with someone earlier today. We were talking about a book that both of us happened to be reading. I didn't know this person before having this conversation. I was actually at a bookstore um, yeah. uh, looking for a particular book and, and yeah. ended up having this conversation with this woman that worked at the bookstore about this book. And she talked about she was in this study group with, an, uh, with another couple of people. And this one woman, she said... Well, um, if it, you know, she, she just doesn't see, you know, this thing and this thing and this thing, and then she can get to her divinity. And I, I said to her, wait, 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 no, no, the divinity's always there. Yeah. It, you know, there's, it's just, you have to get out of the way of it. I, I think that's also what you're pointing to as well, is it's always there, that essence, that. It's, it's always there. I'm. I mean, recently, both science and spirituality has come together with an understanding that we're more than meets the eye. So you have researchers from NASA studying the universe, and they say, if you take everything that has form in the universe, anything that can be seen with instrumentation, big or small, from subatomic particles to the largest objects in the solar system. You put all of that together, it only makes up 4% of the universe. 96% of the universe is invisible energy. Now, this is not hokum pokum. This is, in science, this is common knowledge. Now, quantum physics says there's this infinite field of energy potential. And out of that field, things take form. Well, that's what's meant by we're human beings. The human is the 4%. The being is essence. 96%. Who we are, our true self is 100%. <laughs> human and divine, human and beings. And beings is just another word for that which lives us. So in the same way, a computer can't live itself. It wouldn't even be called a computer if it wasn't connected to a source of energy beyond itself. It wouldn't operate. Human beings would not operate without a source of energy. Now we're finding out the source of energy is not in our brain. It's not in our brain. They've looked for it in our brain. They can't find it. It's not there. And it's not there any more than if you look for electricity in the parts of a computer, you wouldn't find it. Right? So it's, it's giving a very different, if you will, paradigm. Mm-hmm fundamentally different. The old paradigm of psychology is who we are is what we think, what we feel, and how we behave. And all the exploration was in those areas. 
And I did that for 10 years, looking at what people thought, the content of their thinking, and examining it, challenging it, questioning it, working with it, trying to improve it, trying to reframe it, looking at feelings, trying to help people get in touch with feelings and cathart them, right? Or get them out or, or transform them through technique or looking at people's behavior and trying to shape it through modification. That was 450 different schools of psychology and all of them were looking at thought feeling or behavior content, right? And now we're getting more and more interested, much more interested in what creates our experience? What's creating it moment to moment and how is experience created? Right? So if we're connected to this formless energy, how does it create our experience? Well, it creates mental activity, which this energy and power then brings to life as moment to moment experience. So it's all coming from all of our experience, no matter what it is, happy, sad, it's being created from within. So I have to ask you, since this is the, you know, we're, this is the big love relationship series. Yes. So someone has some relationship challenge or another could be, you know, with a mate, a partner, somebody they work with, you know, they're having these challenges. I know that from my experience that, you know, they're, they're looking for the answers. They're wanting help They're you know, in a lot of cases, what do you think gets in the way of people? And, and I know that that's kind of where you're, you're, where you're going to, but what gets in the way of people having more love and better relationships and deeper connection with the people in their world? This is shocking to find out, but there's one problem we all have. We get caught up in our thinking content and get wedded to those ideas and think they represent essence or truth. But isn't it the other person, you know, what they're doing? Well, that's, that's where a lot of people think. That's the common understanding, isn't it? It really is. I, I, I thought that was true. Yeah. I thought I would get really quiet in a meditative state and then my kids would be arguing and I was sure somehow they created feelings of bother or upset in me. They're driving me crazy. Mm -hmm. At times I thought my wife was being annoying as if she has the power to create feelings. See, there's no science behind the fact that something in the world can create and yet, most of the world believes their feelings are created from something in the physical world. Mm -hmm. Weather makes me bummed out. Traffic really bothers me. Uh, people can ruin my peace of mind. Mm -hmm. People give me love. The sun makes me happy. It's... it's this misunderstanding of where experience comes from is hundreds of, hundreds of years old, and there's no science now to back that up. There's no science at all to back that up. If you put 100 people in a stressful situation, a horrible, dangerous situation, you're going to have 100 different experiences. Everybody will have a different experience because now we're discovering whatever we think we're going to experience. <laughs> Whether we know it or not, that's how we work. This, this energy of life, the power of thought, creates our mental activity, which is brought to life as a feeling, perception, sensation. That's where they come from. In the same way, everything on the computer, what you and I are seeing is brought to life 
by this power of electricity to operate the parts, right? Without the elect, if you don't understand that electricity is essential to computers, you'll you would build the computer with no electricity and could wouldn't be able to figure out why it wouldn't work. A human being without the being part, the energy part, would not work. Okay, can we get practical here, Otto, well, in terms of love and relationships? That's where we want to go, for sure. Just really practical. When I'm caught up in my thinking, I'm going to feel whatever thinking I'm caught up in. For example, I'm sitting here, my wife is just out there doing something. And I'm going, I can't believe she's doing that. Now I'm going to feel that thought. Why, what, what, she, what she thinks she's doing. I don't like her to do that. Now I'm going to feel that thought, right? And I, I don't have to put up with this. Now I'm going to feel that thought. And okay, what, how am I going to deal with this? What am I going to do? And I just keep thinking and thinking and thinking about what she's doing, what I should do, what I should say, how I should deal with it, what it means. And I can tell you one thing Otto, and I've seen over the years, while we're thinking hard like that, we're contracting. We're doing that. No one is forcing us to do that. We're thinking and using our minds in a way that's creating more and more contraction. And then we think the problem of our contracted feeling is outside of us. So it's very, very helpful when I work with couples. I want them to know that thought, the power of thought creates feelings. Happiness, joy, love, sadness, anger, hurt, anxiety, depression, upset, impatience, on and on and on and on and on. Stressful thought, you feel stressful. Anxious thought, you feel anxious. Loving thought, you feel loving. It's, there's a logic of the psyche behind this. So I want couples to know that. You know why? Because then when we get upset, it makes a huge difference whether we think that person upset me. And I need them to change and stop being that way and give me love so I can feel better. And I can't do that until they change. You Susie see and I use the, the phrase a lot as people get caught up in the shoulds a lot of the times. Yeah. That person should behave in a certain, certain way. They yeah. should treat me this way. You know, they should or shouldn't do this in order for me to be happy. Now, what I love about this, Otto, is it's all neutral. Mm -hmm. It's not saying you shouldn't feel what you feel. They're going to say whatever you think you will feel. Mm, that's that's big that's huge yeah that's really huge we can't not feel what we think so what changes for people is where you think the feeling is coming from when i started learning this it went against everything i had learned as a psychologist i had been a psychologist for 10 years and everybody was saying your feelings are created by circumstance the past personality biochemistry parenting, genetics, different situations, other people. You go into any, I work in big companies, you go into big companies, say, where does your stress at work come from? And they'll point towards something outside of them that has nothing to do with thought. Mm -hmm. You ask people, I've asked tens of thousands of people, what are you feeling and where do you think it comes from? <laughs> and this is a new understanding coming into the world. So here's what happens. I would get annoyed and bothered with my kids. And if I thought they were driving me crazy, I would keep thinking in a way that kept me annoyed and bothered. And I would try and correct their behavior from that place. All right. I start learning about this. I get annoyed and bothered. At some point I would just go, oh, that's coming from my thinking. And I'd let, as soon as people realize this, their thinking creating their pain, without any technique, people let go of it the way you let go of something that's too hot in your hand. You don't need a technique. How do I let go of this hot object? 
you go, you just, you oh my God, go. holding this is pain, and you let go. Oh my gosh, holding these thoughts in mind is pain, and you let go. Where do people land when they let go of what they're thinking? They fall open and land back in the now. Now, what is the now? Is not the absence of those thoughts, but now they're free to flow because we're not holding them. That's how people get over upset quickly. It's called resilience. So resilience in a relationship is phenomenal. So when I've worked with couples who are arguing and fighting and battling, and they start understanding the role of thought, they start catching themselves, thinking up contraction, and you can't feel close to somebody while you're contracted. Contracted is another word for ego. When you're in your ego battling another person's ego, it doesn't end up pretty. I've tried that <laughs> many a time, as we all have. When I recognize that my contraction is created from thought, and I fall back into the now, always, People's thinking starts to soften, open. It's like setting a snow globe down. The snow starts to settle. Our thinking settles when we're completely in the now. Now, and, and this thinking that settles, that's when you see something new. Yeah. It's the only way we can get new is when we fall out of the old thinking. We drop open. So now we're more open and receptive. We're, instead of being closed-minded, we become more open-minded. And when we're open, something new can be created. And what's, this is the great discovery. Mm. We're built to feel good. You take any human being in the world, when they let go of thoughts that burden them, they start to lighten up. Feel, feel more relaxed. Mm -hmm. I've taught this to guys in prison who were living in rage and acting on it because they thought it was just their rage was justified. That doesn't mean horrible things don't happen. It's just saying there's a source to our experience and it's from within, not from without. It's very empowering. We're no longer victims of the world. I no longer blame every uncomfortable feeling on someone in my family. I become more self-responsible, able to respond rather than just react from my conditioned thinking. Very powerful, very, very, very quickly people can learn this. We're teaching this in schools to little kids to middle school kids, high school kids, adults, people in business, people in prison, people in horrific circumstance. Because when our head's clear, all of us feel better and do better. We do better in life, we do better in sports, and we do better in relationships. So there's nothing wrong with getting upset. It just matters where you think it comes from. Because <laughs> I get upset. When I don't know where it's coming from, I keep thinking thoughts that keep me in my contracted ego, right? And if I bring that to other people, it's a little bit like sneezing on people. I don't see other people going, oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. I'm glad you built up a lot of negativity and then brought it to me and dumped it on me. Yeah, okay, that's helping, right? It's we fall out of our thinking, we get more clear-headed. Our senses come alive so that we can enjoy life more. And we start connecting with these, you talked about big love, we start connecting with big feelings. Peace, right, is our head clears of thoughts that burden us, we start feeling more peace. As our senses open up, we start feeling more joy. As we touch this deeper place of essence, 
we start feeling more connected to life. We start having bigger feelings, gratitude, love, compassion. They're bigger feelings because they take us beyond our personal ego. They can take us beyond our little self. We become more concerned about being of service to other people. We stop waiting and expecting other people to bring us love so that we can feel love. We fall out of thinking, find a deeper love inside and then keep bringing that forward into the world. It's a very different relationship. One is always feeling like you're taking away my love and I'm waiting or wanting you to give it to me. And that's the outside in view. From the inside out, it's I have love abundant in my heart. And when my head really clears, then my heart starts to open. And then I can just bring a little bit of kindness, a little bit of listening, a little bit of presence, a little bit of this is what happens when people fall in love. They, they very quickly let go of the thoughts of upset and they come back to, oh, I'm sorry, sweetie. Oh, okay, let's start over, right? When I started learning what we're talking about here, what we call the three principles, when I started learning that, it shifted my whole psychological understanding from how do I cope with a world that makes me, that hurts me and then has to be a certain way to love me, that I need to be happy. This is, I have love and happiness and peace inside of me, but it's only found underneath my thinking. So, it changed my parenting when I first learned this auto. I'd get upset, and if I didn't see it, I'd dump my upset all over my kids, and then it was the familiar pattern that all parents know about. You got now you get two people upset and they're trying to work stuff out or right. Now as I started learning this, there would be times when I'd get upset and suddenly I'd realize, oh, how it actually is working is I'm living in a thought-created feeling. And I'm just feeling my thinking. Then it's not so scary. It's just some thoughts. But for these thoughts, I wouldn't feel this way. No matter what my kids are doing. No matter what's happening. But for these thoughts, I wouldn't be feeling this way. And it's a relief brings me back into the now. I stop holding, holding my thinking in mind. I start, in a sense, letting go of or dropping the thoughts that were burdening me. And it's only our own thoughts that burden us. And as that freed up, without a whole lot of effort, and sometimes within seconds, Otto, I could come back to my kids from a calmer, kinder, more loving space. And it blew me away. I said, oh my God, I can be a good parent no matter how I was parented, no matter what kind of traumas I went through in my life. Right? I just have to begin to take responsibility for my feelings and then drop out of thought, which is the only way we can find this space within us where new and fresh can come, where love comes from, where peace comes from, where joy comes from. Everybody experiences this. You go for a walk in the woods, you're caught up in your thinking, you don't even see the trees, nonetheless experience beauty. You realize your contraction while you're walking in the woods, that feeling is friendly, it reminds you of our true self, the space within as Michael would say, our friend Michael Neal, we drop out of the confines of our thinking, our negative conditioned, learned thinking that we weren't born with, all those judgments, we drop out of that thinking in the now, 
And then we see beauty around us on our walk. Everywhere we look, the trees, oh my God, the light, oh my God, the, the birds singing, oh my God, our senses come alive. Right? Our senses come alive. And then we feel more connected with nature. Same in relationships. Same thing. I don't feel close to my wife. I'm living in contracted feeling. I wake up to that, which means I wake up out of that thinking and I let it go. Why? So that I can touch a space where new and fresh is found where the heart is, where love is, where kindness is. And it's right here within at all times. All I have to do, there's no entrance requirement other than allowing the thinking that we're in to fall away. How do we do that? When we're in the present moment, it happens. I've never met a person. In order to drive a car, you have to get present. And when you're present, you're wide awake in your senses, right? And then you're making life and death decisions without even thinking about it. Same in relationships. I used to think I had to think my way to what to do or what to say. I drop out of it. And in presence, there's freedom from burden there's awake senses, there's big feelings start to come in, relief, relaxation, a little kindness, a little appreciation that starts to come in when we're open-minded and open-hearted starts to come in. And then we have something to offer relationships. And if I only have one job with my wife, one job, Go beyond my personal thinking, find this space, access the feelings that come out of that space for free and bring them to my wife. And when that's the only way I've seen any relationship get better. It doesn't get better through arguing, criticizing, judging, staying in contracted feeling and bringing contracted egoic feelings to another person. I've never, I've never seen that work. And we all try. I sure did. I should, sometimes I still do, thinking, wow, well, and I lose sight of my true self. All right? I lose sight of that space, essence, essence, that is right there invisible, that when any of us drop into that space, it awakens big feelings, big love. And that's the, that's where we find what we're looking for, not out in the world, but in that space. But people have to find that out for themselves. Eh? Don't take my word for it. Next time you feel really upset, if you know it has something to do with thought, and you can just see if you fall out of that thinking back into the now, Suddenly, there's a feeling of sort of coming down out of your head into this openness, this presence, where we're wide open. And then you see if your feeling doesn't start to shift. Find out. And then see what happens when you go parent from that feeling. Bring that to your spouse and see, see how that works out, find out. It's right here available to everybody in every moment. Essence never goes away. Our thoughts come and go, our feelings come and go. Essence doesn't go away. Fall out of thought is the only way you can touch essence. Our soul, our being, our spiritual nature, the love within, the big heart, the true heart, the universal heart. One of the things that my wife Susie and I used to uh, teach a lot is people would have communication issues, challenges of one kind or another. And this is going back many years ago. We came out with a program. It was 
all about magic words, you know, the right words to say. And, mm. you know, at, at a certain level, that was helpful to people, still can be. But what we found mm -hmm. since we have discovered, you know, what you're talking about here is that the words that you say to someone, yes, they certainly matter, but it's no longer a struggle when you start, when, first of all, when you notice that all, oh, I'm just caught up in my thinking here and you start to notice all oh, I'm in this relationship with my beloved and all that's going on is I've got this cloudy vision and I'm not seeing her clearly enough or I'm not seeing him clearly enough right yeah. now. And so what we've been seeing is over the last quite a few, you know, several years is that when you communicate from that place where you're seeing that other person, you know, without that distorted picture of, you know, this story that you make up about them that isn't true. It's just your, your, your thought that you're making up in the moment that changes everything. Yeah. It changes it how you communicate. Game changer. Yeah. That's beautiful. Otto. It's, it's a different understanding. Because if we think it's in the words, we'll do what I did for years in communication is try and figure out what to say and how to say it. So the whole time I'm with my wife, I'm thinking about what she's saying and reacting to it in my head or thinking about what I'm going to say. And I'm not present. You can't, think and, be, you can't think and be present. <laughs> Love happens only while we're present. It doesn't happen while we're thinking. You can't experience peace, joy, or love while you're thinking. No one can. Try it. <laughs> Try it. Right? That's the secret of little kids. They get really present. And then when their upsetting thoughts and feelings flow through, they get over it quickly. They're resilient. And so are adults when we're present. So contraction is an invitation to the present. It's a gift. It's a warning sign letting us know we're caught up in thought. And as we fall open, the burden goes away and these deeper feelings emerge naturally. 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 And it can happen very quickly with this understanding, because like you said, Otto, you know, the only thing in the way of you feeling love toward this person in this moment is your own thinking. But for our thinking, when my head is really quiet and someone's in front of me that's full of negativity, I will either feel love for them or compassion. And a big to be able to, to be present enough to do that, which is which is within all of us to you know, the, all of us can do that. Any of us can do that. We're thought away from one thought we're, away. We're, we're one thought away. That's what my teacher Sidney Banks used to say all the time. We're one thought away, which means we're caught up in thought, and people say, "Oh, it's so hard to be loving. It's so hard to be good parent. It's so hard to and." I say, okay, listen, I'll tell you the secret. And I've never met a person yet who can't just stop thinking for a moment and listen. And I say, I thought you said it was so hard. You just did it in one second. You said that? <laughs> <laughs> because we haven't been taught that only underneath holding our thoughts in mind can we find what we're looking for. Peace, joy, love, clarity, perspective, common sense, insight, inspiration, motivation, aspiration, new ideas, new thoughts, creativity, all the things human beings want and are looking for. We're not going to find outside. They're given to us freely when we drop into this essential space called the now or our true self, not our ego, 
where we're caught up in and identified with our ideas, beliefs, and feelings, we fall beyond that. What's left? What's still? What's always here underneath that? Presence. Right here on, with anybody. With anybody. All right? Now, I still get caught up at times, Otto, because it's a learning curve. We keep learning, keep learning, keep learning. I get caught up in times, and at times I'll bring my annoyance or impatience. It's hard for me to see his thought. I'll bring that to my wife. Come on, hurry up. And then sometimes I catch it, sometimes I don't. When I don't, it plays out as it does. When I do, it reverses history. It's like when I drop out of that thinking of impatience or upset, I never know what this deeper intelligence is going to bring to me in that moment, but it's new and fresh. Surprises so, me. So let's take an issue that people in relationships sometimes really do struggle with. Let's say there's been a, a breach of trust in some way. You know, you, you're in a relationship with someone, a marriage perhaps, and you, you thought you had an agreement about how you're going to be together. One, one person in the relationship breaks that agreement. And, you know, so there's a, a trust issue now. A lot of times people really struggle with, oh, how do I trust again? Yeah. The key word here is struggle. Yeah. When I see myself struggling or my wife struggling or a friend struggling or a client struggling, I know for a fact at that time we're really caught up in our ideas about what's happening, what it means, and what's possible. It takes a lot of energy to keep thinking contracted. Mm -hmm. Like our hand can be open, uncontracted. You contract it. It's meant to do that. No problem. But if you stay that way, it your hand, right, my hand already feels sore and tired. And I'm meant to stay that way. So contraction lets us know we're caught up in thought and reminds us that there's a deeper self. When I fall out of contraction, the feeling of effort and struggle falls away because those are contracted feelings. The instant people are present, this is a powerful realization I had, Otto. When anybody is present, whatever they're feeling at that moment, hurt, pain, confusion, upset, that feeling starts to open. It feels like you're relaxing into yourself feels like it's starting to open, but it's the unknown from the intellect. So the intellect can go crazy and say, I got to figure this out. So when we're in the unknown, we don't have a clue what to do about what just happened. And it's not denying that what happened happened, it happened. Not saying that wasn't horrible. All right, on a human level. It's not saying that there's anything wrong with feeling hurt or whatever people are feeling. We're going to experience our thinking no matter what we do. It's not wrong or bad to feel anything. Now, this is another thing that I teach people at all that I think is essential in relationships. When any human being falls out of their thinking, and our feeling starts to open up. In that feeling, there's more knowing. Like when we're driving a car, we're making decisions without thinking about it. And they're life and death decisions. These are not small decisions. Right? One error in judgment and you've hit the person coming toward you. Right? So... When we're fully present, there's a knowing. Why is that? Because we're connected to the energy of life. And you know what the, the quantum physicists say? This quantum field of energy is full of intelligence. All the information that knows how to create life 
and operate life. It's what for centuries people have called wisdom, an intelligence deeper than our computer brain intelligence, right? It's the intelligence behind life that knows how to beat our hearts right now. It knows how to run our pancreas, knows how to run my brain. Beautiful tool when used wisely. Knows how to breathe me, right? Knows how to turn light into experience so I can see things, right? Vibration into sound so I can hear things, right? It knows how to do that. When human beings are in life and death situations, the advice that's given to people is never think yourself into a frenzy. I'm saying if you're in a life and death situation, get fully present, stay calm. Why is that? Because when we're fully present, our thinking calms down no matter who we are, no matter what we're feeling. And as it quiets and calms, we have more knowing what to do. And people in dangerous situations do better when they know how to respond to that without having to think about it. In a situation like I just described, yes. there certainly is going, there are going to be things that you're gonna to have to do in the real world. And if your mind is clear, you're able just to be present in the present moment. It's never really hard figuring out what you're going to do next, how you're going, you know, if your, if your intention is to build a close connected relationship again, or if you're going to be with that person or, you know, whatever your next right thing is that drops away as far as the, you know, it being a struggle. You know, we've talked about that a few times in this conversation, but that really falls yeah. away. Struggle is thinking that creates stress. Chronic stress is a burden. Burden keeps us, psychological burden keeps us from functioning at our best. In sports, if people stay caught up in their thinking or are really stressed, mm -hmm. performance drops off the chart very quickly, even for professionals. A musician who's experiencing great stress or a singer who, who is caught in chronic stress, nothing wrong with stress, it comes and goes naturally. Mm -hmm. But when we're thinking into stress, worrying, judging, judging ourselves, worrying about what people will think, it deepens the contraction and we feel more separate, more problem, more issue. When we fall out of it, this deeper wisdom is full of possibilities. So I used to think I have to know how to deal with these situations. So it's on me to figure it out. Now it's Oh my gosh, this is huge. My intellect computer will never be able to figure out what to do in this situation. But wisdom knows. And when I drop wide open, this is the wisdom that knows how to create the universe. Come on. <laughs> am I going to rely on my little pea brain or, or am I going to go into the world wide web and see what new and fresh occurs to me? And I tell you, because I've worked with families and couples that have been in severe crisis and horrible things have happened. When people drop in to this space where they find their true self, people are surprised by what occurs to them to do without even analyzing first. Like if I was playing sports and something happened and if I had to sit there and analyze it and figure out all the odds and the angles and the positions and what it means and why it's happening, I would be useless to the team. They would be right to pull me out of the game. When I'm present, I make, I'm guided by a deeper intelligence. I, I almost said, I 
it's, we lose a sense of ego, I, and we find our true self, which is wise, aware, loving essence underneath the burden of our personal thinking. Always, always. These guys in prison who have felt burdened by their thinking and victimized by life their whole life, and they feel either hopeless or rage, hopeless or rage, hopeless or rage. When they discover their, the fact of thought, they start waking up out of thoughts that burden them. In the now, those thoughts don't stand a chance. They dissolve naturally. You don't have to do anything about them. They begin to soften, open. We begin to drop into the quiet underneath the noise of our thinking. And in that quiet space, we begin to feel more present more open. The intellect doesn't have a clue what to do, but we're in a space that has access to the deeper feeling and deeper knowing of the universe. Right? We fall into the heart of the universe. And universally, people will start to feel better and think with new and fresh thinking, think better. No matter what's happening outside of you, when we go beyond our personal thinking, which can't deal with our problems effectively, no one can think their way to wisdom. No one can think their way to love. You find love, wisdom reveals itself, you just start surprising yourself with how you respond to things. Unbelievable. <clears throat> One final question, Dickon. I know that you just celebrated, and correct me if I've got this wrong, you just celebrated your 51st wedding anniversary? Yeah, that's right. Thank, thank God, I mean it, that my wife and I, stumbled across Sidney Banks and his teaching, which is what I'm trying my best to share here. And we just discovered we're thinkers. We're more than our thought content. We're the space of open, aware presence. And in that openness, this creative spirit brings us feelings that uplift and new and fresh thinking to deal with our circumstances and situations. So we just have to get our ego out of the way, our contraction out of the way, to have these uncontracted feelings get stronger. And then we have something to offer the world that changes the world, changes relationships. It used to be in the old way of thinking. When you get married, you go through the honeymoon stage, and then pretty soon you start having low moods with each other and start getting more critical, and then you go into this uh, uh, coming to reality stage, and then you start suffering and getting upset, and then you go through this stage where you're trying to navigate that and negotiate it, and, and that's a real hard struggle to work out your differences and your problems, and then if you get beyond that, you begin to be uh, a little more understanding, and if you get beyond that, finally, toward the end of your life, if you're lucky, you get to a place where you can really be uh, collaborative and compassionate and loving no matter what you're experiencing. Well, the honeymoon stage and the place of reconciliation and collaboration is this space within. Mm. So I don't have to wait for myself to mature over the years to begin to get those benefits. Can touch that space. 
and then get those benefits. So in a sense, Otto, what I'm saying is I can dislike my wife, know it's thought, fall out of that thinking, get quieter, begin to feel either love or compassion for her. And I keep falling, falling into love, big love, again and again and again. And that the fact that I get caught up in the weather doesn't mean that behind the weather there isn't always the blue sky of presence. And in that blue sky, the sun then begins to bring warmth and nourishment. Right? Feelings that uplift and new and fresh thinking. Right? The sun doesn't go anywhere. The blue sky doesn't go anywhere. And we're not just the weather. We're the whole system. And for what, what I'm taking from that is the love can always be there. It's it just, is always there. The it, love is it, always it, there. It, it gets just, covered over by judgmental thinking. Yeah. Huh? The Dalai Lama is saying that love is just the absence of judgmental thoughts. When you, when you drop out of all judgmental thoughts, and all concepts are pretty judgmental, when you fall out of concepts, always your feeling starts to open. Your heart starts to open. Your mind opens. Your hand comes unclenched. Right? We become open-hearted. Right? But not open-hearted and vulnerable and dangerous. Open-hearted and wise. So that you know how to navigate negativity and people's unkindness. Common sense. Street smarts, they call it on the street. Right? You get better at dealing with negativity, not worse. That's part of love, too. Big sure is. Okay. Dickon, this has been wonderful. I could talk to you all night about love and relationships. And uh, I know that people are going to be benefited greatly from this. For folks that want to reach out to you and connect with you and your work further, what's the, the best way for people to connect with you? Go to YouTube, type in Dick and Battinger. There's three pages of talks about this, if, if not more. Uh, that's a way of continuing to learn this. Or I would recommend going to listen to my teacher, at www.sidbanks.com, S-Y-D-B-A-N-K-S.com. And there's free, everything is free on that website. Sid died about 10 years ago. Everything on that website is free. Uh, his talks, video and audio for anybody. You can live stream and uh, hear uh, uh, what I consider an enlightened man talking about our true nature, our true self, and how everybody can wake up to it. And it's right here. No techniques, just insight and realization. So there you go. Dick and thank you. No, oh, you're welcome. I appreciate don't. you for being here and uh, thank you for being a part of the big love relationship series that my wife Susie and I are doing. My pleasure, and I'm glad you folks are doing this.